Hey guys, Patton here, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to show you how to use RetroArc with AutoBleam 0.5.1. By adding RetroArc to AutoBleam, you'll be able to play many, many different systems on your PlayStation Classic, such as Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, Sega CD, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, a ton of different systems. And it's extremely easy to do. The guys over at AutoBleam made this very simple. So the first couple steps are having to prep your flash drive and then putting AutoBleam on that flash drive. I cover all this in my initial AutoBleam 0.5.1 installation tutorial, which I will leave in my description. So once you've prepped your flash drive already, you've named it Sony, you have it FAT32 formatted. All you have to do is take this RetroArch folder, drag it right to the root, of your USB drive. So there we go, everything's been moved over. Something else I also recommend doing is right clicking on your flash drive. Go to new and then folder. We're gonna make this our ROMs folder. This is where we're gonna put all our games that aren't PlayStation games. So I've named it ROMs, we're gonna go in there and then I'm gonna start making folders for just a few systems to show you guys how this works. So we're just gonna test this out with three really easy cords to work with, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and then Game Boy Color. So I'll take some Nintendo ROMs, just drag them to my NES folder. Same with Super Nintendo and some Game Boy Color games. So all we've done is added this RetroArch folder, which again, I'll provide in my description for you. It has all the core files and all the playlist files set up already. So there's no messing around with that. And in each of our ROM folders, you can see we just have a few games each. So all that's left is to unplug the flash drive from our PC, plug it into our PlayStation Classic and boot it up. Okay, so with AutoBleam loaded up, all we have to do is hit the square button. That should open up the RetroArch menu. And there we go, the menu's open. So one of the first things you want to do is go all the way over to the right to this plus symbol right here, where it says scan directory. Hit X on that option, X one more time. And now you're going to go to media. From here, you're going to go to the folder where you put your ROMs. So we have it right here. And this directory are the three folders that we separated by system. Now you can enter one of these folders again and scan this directory if you only want to create a playlist for one type of game, or you can scan the entire directory here and try and get playlists for all these systems. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hit the X button on scan this directory. You'll see in the top left corner that green font, that's the progress that's being made in creating the directory. You have to pay attention to that because it'll let you know when it's done. Right there, it says scanning of directory finished. Now, if we back out, you'll see we now have three new playlists and each playlist has the games that we added just fine. So we have Game Boy Color, Nintendo, and Super Nintendo. Let's test one game out real quick. How about Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX? We'll hit X on that. X one more time on run, and then we're gonna select the core to use with this game. I always prefer Gambat. I've never had any issues using this core for Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. Looks like the game started up just fine. Sound works and it looks great. To go back to the RetroArc menu, just hit start and select on your controller, go down to close content. Then you can go back to your other playlist and try some other games. How about Super Mario Brothers 2? Select which core you want. How about Nestopia? and run. I'm always Luigi when it comes to Super Mario Brothers 2. I don't know why. Or the princess. Sometimes Toad. Actually, I don't think I have a specific character now that I'm thinking about it. I probably go easy mode and I select the princess almost all the time, but here's Luigi doing his thing, playing Mario Brothers 2 on the PlayStation Classic. So there you go. That is how you install RetroArch on your PlayStation Classic using AutoBleam. I want to give thanks to Xbox ISO for providing their RetroArch folder for me to use in this video. I really appreciate it. And of course, the AutoBleam guys who are doing an excellent job. So bringing out really great things to use on your PlayStation Classic. And that's all there is to it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.